Okay, let's do it. I wish you a wonderful morning here from South Central Texas, broadcasting to you live from Austin. This is Robert Phoenix with 15 Minutes of Flame. My heart just swells when I hear those applause. What's happening out there? Uh, Yesterday was Father's Day. I had a great Father's Day. Spent it with my my son and didn't do a whole lot you know it wasn't like we went out and did anything incredibly special we had breakfast at my favorite breakfast dive and we played games you know it was incredibly hot here over the weekend we were in triple digits on saturday and sunday saturday went out to barton springs and just cooled off one of the jewels of austin is barton springs and uh, i never get tired of it Remember the first time I experienced it was back in 1996. I thought, wow, this is just amazing. I love this place. And it's still as cool as it was, literally and figuratively, back in 1996. And you can get a whole lot of value out of $5. $3 for me, $2 for my son. That's it, $5. And you get to swim in this incredible spring, cold spring pool. Fantastic stuff. Uh, yesterday, just playing board games. I got a board game that I used to play back when I was roughly 13 years old. Got it on eBay. It's a old Sports Illustrated football game, and I picked it up, and my son were playing it over the weekend. And then we went into the 21st century, and he kicked my butt on NBA 2K. So that was really the bulk of um, Father's Day, and it was fine. It was absolutely fine. How was everybody? Tried to do the live stream last night with intermittent success. I guess people heard every 7th, 8th, or ninth word. Um, Some people said that they had been on a live stream earlier that night, last night. Same thing was happening. And there were other people that were talking about how the Internet was not great in Austin last night. So I don't know what was going on. It was my first live stream back on Sunday nights in about a month. And uh, it was good. I mean, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed doing it. It It felt good to get my feet wet. But the quality wasn't great, so I've got to, again, sort of look at that and reinvest in that. Today we're going to be talking about Chuck Grassley, and this really caught my eye here because, first of all, there are a lot of people listening to the show that are really into Bitcoin and the cryptos, and I think they're important. I think they're really, really important for a number of reasons. Number one, I just think as a hedge, it's a great it's a great hedge to have. The cryptocurrencies are a great hedge to have, especially Bitcoin. And number two, there there can be, I think, an interesting level of novelty and innovation that spills out of the, the cryptos. And I don't know what quite what that is yet, but it feels like it's still in a very much a nascent phase. Now, the dark side, of course, is the transactions that are used on the dark dark web where people are moving basically money around or assets around through Bitcoin because it's non-trackable. And you can basically deal in all kinds of illicit substances and activities on the dark web, and Bitcoin becomes this invisible realm of transactions. So if you're looking to curtail those kinds of transactions and various aspects of distribution, whether it's people or substances, whatever, then you would say, hey, let's uh, let's make Bitcoin trackable. Let's make sure that we figure out where people are moving their assets on one level it makes sense on another level it's like well hold on a second hold on what more do you want out of this so there's a a bill that chuck grassley 
who is a longtime Republican from the state of Iowa, and he's uh, introducing the Combating Money Laundering, Terrorist Financing, and Counterfeit Act of 2017. Can you believe that? The bill is, I'm just going to get into the bill number. S-1241. And the line item here is to improve the prohibitions on money laundering and for other purposes. So there are other people involved in this. Uh, Feinstein, Hornin, and White House. Mr. White House. I'd like to have the name White House. Introduced the following bill, which was read twice and referred to the committee to improve the prohibitions on money laundering and for other purposes. This act may be cited as the Combating Money Laundering, Terrorist Financing, and Counterfeiting Act of 2017. And there's a long table of contents, transportation or transshipment of blank checks and bearer form, bulk cash smuggling, uh, Section 1957 violations involving commingled funds and aggregated transactions. What else? We have recharging uh, money laundering as a course of conduct, illegal money services, businesses. Uh, what else do we have? Concealment money laundering, freezing bank accounts of persons arrested for offenses involving the movement of money across international borders. If a person is arrested or charged in connection with an offense described in subparagraph C involving the movement of funds into, into or out of the United States, the Attorney General may apply to any federal judge or magistrate judge in the district in which the arrest is made or the charges are filed for an ex part order restraining any account held by the person arrested or charged for not more than 30 days, except that such a 30-day time period may be extended for good cause shown at a hearing conducted in the manner provided by uh, in Rule 43C of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, the court may receive and consider evidence and information submitted by the government that would be inadmissible under the Federal Rules of Evidence. Um, what else do we have? Prohibiting money laundering through uh, Hawala's other informal value transfer systems and closely related transactions. I do not know what Hawala is, but I'm assuming that it has to do with some practice of Islamic banking, which is very, very different than Western banking as we know it. So just to give you an idea as to the scope of this, first of all, who is Chuck Grassley? Chuck Grassley is 83 years old. He is a dyed-in-the-wool conservative. If you are pro-Trump, you love Chuck Grassley. You'll love him. He was a guy that pushed back on the Obamacare bill. He said that there were death panels involved. He is opposed to gun control. Um, he's a pro-lifer. Uh, he's expressed the impact of regulations on the EP by the EPA on farming. Uh, he, he's been critical of the Health Care Act, Affordable Health Care Act. He, in fact, he voted against it. And... He voices opposition to a bipartisan Senate bill, the Compassionate Access Research Expansion and Respect States Act, that would move cannabis from Schedule 1 to Schedule 2. The bill would allow, with medical cannabis laws, to legally prescribe it and allow it for much easier research into its medical efficiency. So he's kind of down. He's down on medical marijuana or medical cannabis. So he's... Pretty clearly a, a, a dyed-in-the-wool Republican. He's 30, 83 years old, so he's not going to be... I mean, let's say grass has got another 10 years left, but his, his run is kind of coming to an end here. Um, let's talk about the bill and what's going on. Here is an a article from a website called Alternative Media Syndicate. It says cash and bit Congress to force citizens to register cash and Bitcoin violators to get 10 years in prison 
So Congress submits a bill. This is the bill I'm talking about, making it illegal to hold cash, Bitcoin, or other assets outside of a bank without informing them in writing, just as the war on drugs was never actually about slowing down or stopping the import and use of the illegal narcotics, so too was the war on terror, not about stopping individuals or groups from inciting violence or political means. No, of course not. The war on terror has prompted more terror, real and synthetic, mostly synthetic. Well, since the real victims, going back to the 1970s when the war on drugs was uh, uh, hold on a second. Okay, let me go back here. Uh, in fact, we already know that the U.S. agencies have funded, trained, and armed the very terror groups that are supposedly on the FBI's terror watch list when they supported them in taking over Libya and in the attempt to take over Syria. By the way, a Syrian fighter was shot down by the U.S. I don't know if you've caught that, but, you know, there's obviously more poking the stick but that's more than poking the stick at Assad that's that's almost that's an act of war I'll get back to that so the question that has to be asked what are the purposes behind the, the ideological wars against drugs and terror really about well since the real victims going back to the 1970s when the war on drugs was instituted by President Richard Nixon have been the millions of Americans incarcerated for victimless crimes true and the billions of dollars seized without a trial in what is known as civil forfeiture, then it is fairly obvious who these wars were really focused against. You know, if you're driving around in your car and you get pulled over in certain states and you've got a bunch of cash on you, let's say you're going to buy a car. Let's say you've got 15 grand or 20 grand and you're going to go buy a car. If you get pulled over and they see that money, they can take that money. And they could take the money with the thought that you are using the money or you've gained the money through illegal and illicit purposes. And who runs around $20,000? Must be a drug dealer or must be a pimp or something like that. Although pimps are allowed to basically do their thing. Um, so we've, we've got... <laughs> it's an interesting situation here. So let's keep going. Okay. That's the civil forfeiture part, by the way. Uh, there's more than that. If you if you are somehow involved in anybody that's got connection to drugs, they can they can take everything. They can take everything. Um and it's not pretty. However, with the rise of cryptocurrencies and the new fears coming out that decentralized virtual money could actually start or magnify financial crisis. Congress on May 25th has submitted a bill making it illegal and placing individuals subject to asset confiscation and imprisonment for anyone to have a medium sized amount of cash, Bitcoin, etc., outside of a bank without telling the government how much you have, where you have it and why you have it through the f uh, filling out of new federal forms. How about that? Recently, a new bill was introduced on the floor of the U.S. Senate entitled Pleasantly Combating Money Laundering Terrorist Financing Counterfeiting Act of 2017, which is what I was reading from earlier. You can probably already guess its contents. Cash is evil. Bitcoin is evil. Now they've gone so far to include prepaid mobile phones, retail gift vouchers, or even electronic coupons. So if you have gift cards... Or you have some kind of voucher that you've bought online. You've got to report that. Evil, evil, and evil. Among the bill's sweeping provisions, the government aims to greatly extend its authority to seize your assets through civil asset forfeiture. Civil asset forfeiture allows the government to take whatever they want from you without a trial or any due process. This new bill adds a laundry list of offenses for which they can legally seize your assets, all of which pertain to money laundering and other financial crimes. Here's the thing. Though they have vastly expanded on the definition of such financial crimes, including failure to fill out a form if you happen to be transporting more than $10,000 worth of monetary instruments, have too much cash, you better tell the government. 
If not, they're authorizing themselves in this bill to seize not just the money you didn't report, but all of your assets and bank accounts. They even go so far as to specifically name safety deposit boxes among the various assets that they can seize if you don't fill out the form. How about that? Well, for those of you out there who are Bitcoin and cryptocurrency people, I think you should be suitably alarmed. And the rest of us um, who are cash people, we should join them in their alarmist state. This is this is not great. This is not great. Um, yeah, I don't know what the solution is. Maybe you can get on the horn and call your congressperson and call your senator. You know, here's what will happen. I wonder when they're going to vote for this bill. But between now and the time this bill is voted on, you might see kind of a weird, false flaggy kind of event that will push them into – Moving this bill forward. I mean, think about this, right? If you've got cash on hand and you don't tell the government and they find out somehow, you're screwed. I mean, you're, you're, going, to, you're, you're going to do time and they're going to not only take that, and they'll take even more. This is a pernicious, an absolutely pernicious bill. And I don't know if Grassley thinks he's being really American about the whole thing. You know, he's an interesting guy in some ways because he's this ta- this tax watchdog and he's gone after the IRS and overreach of powers. And so on some level, he's actually been a money advocate. And maybe he thinks that this is his next kind of crusade as for money advocacy. And, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think it's dangerous. I think it's incredibly dangerous because not just from a, monetary perspective but from a privacy perspective as well and once this goes we have nothing left I mean, we barely have anything left at all right now so do what you will contact your congressman contact your senator and i'll give you the bill number again it is s1241 senate bill s1241 you can find it online and you can go through it in its entirety um, what else do we have here? I talked about this, the shooting down of this, uh, this aircraft, uh, in Syria. Let me see if I can find the, here we go. It's from Sputnik News. It says U.S.-led coalition confirms downing Syrian plane. The U.S.-led anti-terrorist coalition confirmed downing the Syrian government forces aircraft. The U.S.-led, this is from uh, Sputnik News again, the U.S.-led international anti-terrorist coalition confirmed bringing down the Syrian government forces aircraft earlier, adding that the plane had been bombing U.S.-backed opposition forces. Oh, man. So, yeah, we're in a war here, and the war is the U.S. and its opposition forces against Syria. The coalition claims that prevented the Syrian forces from advancing to the positions of the Syrian Democratic Forces south of Tabqa by shooting down the aircraft. At uh, 6.43 p.m., a Syrian regime Su-22 dropped bombs near SDF fighters south of Tabqa. And in accordance with the rules of engagement, oh, yes, and the coll- and in collective self-defense of coalition-partnered forces was immediately shot down by a U.S. F-A-18E Super Hornet. The coalition headquarters said it contacted Russian representatives to de-escalate the situation after the attack. So there are rules of engagement in this war with Syria. I did not know that. Interesting. Very interesting. Huh. I'll read it again. At 6.43 p.m., a Syrian regime SU-22 dropped bombs near SDF fighters south of Tabqa, and in accordance with rules of engagement, 
in a collective self-defense coalition partnered forces was immediately shot down by US FA 18E Super Hornet. Very interesting. So, you know, the rules of engagement existed during the Vietnam War. And it made it an unwinnable war for the US. And so that's all you have to do is turn the tables and engage or, or, or initiate the rules of engagement. When you have rules of engagement, there are certain things you can't do. And if you do them, then you're in violation of those rules. I mean, it's, it's like a game. And war is not a game. War is a very intense life or death, often manipulated theater. Um, but it's not a game. But they're treated it as a game here. So if you're Syria, what do you do now? Do you say, oh, sorry, we're not going to violate those those pesky rules of engagement? Because if we don't, you're just going to continue to build your ground forces and continue to move forward, and you're going to continue to take on more real estate, and you're going to eventually occupy Topka, and then we're screwed. Then we have to fight you at a disadvantage versus trying to get an advantage. We've got to get out of Syria and Trump has shown no stomach at all for that. None. Absolutely none. Speaking of Trump, he is still very much on the hot seat, even though he has said that he is not under investigation. That is not the case. Robert Mueller has been brought in to be the hatchet man, to be the hit man on Trump. And there's a chance that he might actually do something here. Now, this is Newt Gingrich. I've never liked Newt Gingrich, but in his new role as kind of this, hmm, I wouldn't call him reformed uh, Republic, Republican. I mean, he's the guy that brought us NAFTA. Newt Gingrich brought us NAFTA. Okay, so I don't have a lot of love for Newt, Newt Gingrich. Let's put it that way. But this is what Gingrich says. Somebody will likely go to jail following the FBI's investigation into Russian election meddling, but said it won't be President Trump. This is what, um, here's what he says. There are too many lawyers who are high power to go home without a scalp. They're going to get somebody. I don't think they're going to get the president, but they're going to get somebody, and they're going to get him for something, and they're probably going to go to jail. Well, that would be a first, wouldn't it? So Gingrich is basically saying they're too far down the line. That's that some head is going to have to roll. And here's what else he says here. He says, what's amazing to me about the Republican passivity here is that Senator Dianne Feinstein, the ranking Democrat, there's that name again, on the Intelligence mm -hmm. Committee said last week after Comey's testimony, you know we really have to look into exactly what's going on with Loretta Lynch and with President Obama, which is very interesting for Feinstein to say. Now I was waiting for one of the Intel chairmen in the House and Senate to get up and say they're opening a new investigation. It's exactly what Loretta Lynch said to Comey. They said that we have to look into it. Fine, let's look into it. The conversation then turned into a discussion of the relationship between Special Counsel Robert Mueller and Comey, who have shared a long-time, well-documented friendship. Mueller has a legal obligation to recuse himself from anything involving Comey. Why would they have picked a guy who's close friends with him to investigate anything involving Comey? So Mueller has hired 13 lawyers for the federal investigation into possible ties between Trump campaign, the Trump campaign and the Russians and plans to hire more. This is where your tax dollars are going, by the way. So Gingrich says somebody's going to fall. But he doesn't think it's going to be Trump. I would say with the great American eclipse coming up on the 21st of August, if this, investi this investigation stretches out into, say, July, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there, there's a major hit to Trump here. And, of course, that will come in the, the third week of August, maybe a little bit before, maybe just a little bit after. So somebody's going to have to go down in the Comey investigation, according to one Newt Gingrich. 
So we're just starting the week off and getting our feet wet as we move into the summer solstice, which is happening on Wednesday. Maybe we'll have a special Wednesday show. Maybe we'll do some kind of a a live summer summer ritual to catalyze the energies and get us into the the heat of summer. It's been a weird uh, summer weather-wise. I was talking with my son's grandfather, a great guy, and he was telling me he lives in Massachusetts that it's been almost sort of winter slash fall like for for weeks, and they finally, finally, finally got some heat. And with the heat came the the gypsy moths, these caterpillars that eat these leaves like they're like they're termites. And apparently, if they get on you and put their little gypsy moth slime on you, you'll it'll really irritate the skin and you'll get a rash. But their their camp is infested by these gypsy moths, which I think is connected to the what's happening with our our skies and the, and the geoengineering, which is completely altering our our planet. New film out. I saw about a thirty minute trailer last night. I believe the film is called Raka R A K K A H, and it is a Niels Blokamp. Film. He's the guy that did District 9 and did Elysium. And it's about an alien invasion on the Earth. And Sigourney Weaver, of course, is in the movie. What's up with Sigourney Weaver and aliens? Anyway, she plays part of the resistance. It looked really interesting. Very, very interesting. I have some ideas already about the subtext. But I'm not going to talk about them right now. It's a little premature. Anyway, check out the uh, check out the trailer. It's actually pretty creepy, very dark, pretty creepy. Raka, Raka. And the reason why I bring it up is because in the film, the planet is being what geoengineered. It's being modified so that humans have less oxygen, and they have these interesting photos from space, which seem to uh, sell the round earth or the globe earth model and the earth is getting covered with geoengineered mists in the skies but it's not the humans that are doing it just the nasty aliens speaking of aliens I saw this meme for Barbara Specter Barbara Lerner Specter Barbara Specter Lerner I always forget how to Put those names together. Uh, but <sighs> this is back when she was talking about Europe and having to bring diversity to Europe and all the stuff that she was basically uh, predictively programming. Anyway, I was looking at a picture of her today. And she looks like an alien. She looks like a gray. That's what, that's what Barbara Lerner's picture looks like a gray alien. You can garner her face. Check it out. Well, that's about it for 15 minutes of flame. And we're at 30 minutes today. Get your Monday going a little bit here. We've got you thinking about Chuck Grassley and his Senate bill. um, And wrapping your head a little bit around what's going on in Syria. Because there's been a kind of a major breach there. And it's all about the coffee cup of awareness here on Monday. And let the aroma of the morning, in fact, coffee, I'm about ready to get my second cup. Uh, Let the aroma of the morning enliven you and take you into this week where we have the Aries moon. And you can be emotionally responsive, proactive on the emotional side. That's it. I'm Robert Phoenix. Thank you for listening to 15 Minutes of Flame. Get your cash in order, your ducks in a row, and let's keep our privacy and our cash to ourselves. I'll be back 24 hours from today. Have a great day. Okay, let's do it.